Hello Sector Watchers, this is the 42nd episode of Sector Spotlight on Tuesday the 4th of August, recorded on the 3rd. For those of you who don't know me, welcome to the show. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I'm your host today. For our regulars, welcome back. I'm glad you're joining me again. Today is the first show of the new month and that means looking at monthly charts. And that is exactly what we're going to do after a brief overview of what happened in asset classes and sectors last week. And it is going to fill the entire almost 30 minutes today. I love to hear from you. So if you watch the show on YouTube, please don't forget to like the video or even better, share your thoughts, ideas, suggestions in the comment section. I'm always on the lookout for questions or suggestions that I can cover in an upcoming episode of Sector Spotlight. So don't be shy. Your opinion is appreciated. For now, let's get going. What happened last week? On the left hand side, I have the RRG with a five day tail for asset classes. And on the right hand side, I have the RRG for sectors with a five day tail and it's the week ending July 31st. Um, if we start with the asset classes, we can see that the benchmark, the VBI and X, uh, went up 1.2%. That's a nice, a nice gain, nothing spectacular. Um, stocks led with 1.7%. And even government bonds were higher with 0.3%. The real estate asset class um, did very well with a gain of 4.1%. The, well, as a matter of fact, everything went up except for the GSG ETF. That's, that's the new commodity ETF that I'm tracking. And by the way, there's a big difference with the uh, DJP, which is the Bloomberg Commodity Index, and this is the GSCI Commodity Index. So i um, got to get used to, uh, to those differences. So for now, I will plot them both on this chart just to, uh, to get the hang of it. What is more important is to see how the tails have moved over the last week. So for asset classes, that was... One, two, three, four, five. So this is this is last. This is before last week, and then we have one, two, three, four, five. And what you can see is that pretty much all the rotations that had started or were in place at the start of the week have continued in that same direction. Maybe the, the most important one is, um, so this is Friday, July 24. This, this was the close of the week before. And you could see that the government bonds had curled up and uh, stocks, ITOT, had curled down. And that was the start of that new move for stocks and preference of stocks so you see that they they actually continued in that direction pretty much all of them so what, what does that leave us um for the near term because we're looking at a daily chart here for coming week um as you know it's recorded on monday the 3rd of august you're watching this on tuesday so we're already well into the week then and i'd say that um we can expect a pretty good week for commodities real estate seems to continue well and um, as a matter of fact I it, it looks pretty good for for bonds and and not so good for um, for stocks uh, at least on a relative basis because we're gonna look at the uh, at the monthly charts later on um, where there is also uh, a thing happening in government bonds so we'll have to wait and see how that plays out for the rest of the week. But at this moment, uh, at the start of the week, things look good for government bonds and less good for stocks for the remainder of the week. Now over to sectors, stock sectors. Uh, same chart here, ending July 31st, five trading days. So one, oh, oops, gotta select that. 
one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. That's the, that's the rotation that we have seen over the last week. And if we look at the, um, at the performances, another very strong week for technology with 5% gain. Real estate, we already saw here uh, in the asset classes that it was very good week for that, 4.2%. Another one uh, in the red lagging quadrant that's leading the performance game, 2.3% for communication services. And then we go down and this is, this, you can actually see that these three sectors make the, the uh, they, they are outperforming the S&P. So, so three are outperforming and um, actually eight are underperforming. Um, so, so the heavyweight technology sector uh, is, um, is, is a big, big driver for last week's performance of the S&P 500. Um, very weak for energy, going back into its, uh, in its, into its relative downtrend uh, and a bit disappointing for uh, materials. But let's also here look at the, at the rotation that took place. So we, we, we browse back five days. So this is um, Friday, July 24. And then we step forward five days. And what you can see is that where we had on the left hand side, um, the rotations pretty much continuing the direction that they were pointing in at the end of the week. In sectors, it's a little different because if we look at Friday 24, things look pretty good for energy for industrials, for utilities, for materials, for healthcare, probably also for um, staples. Yeah, turn right in there. And look at what happened over the course of the week. You see that, um, that a lot of these tails have rolled over. So the leaders of the previous week, uh, the week before last, um, have been rolling over. And um, so there is some sector rotation uh, uh, was going on in last week. And we need to, uh, to put that into a longer term perspective going forward. And at the moment, so we're, we're on Monday right now. And actually, it's, it's pretty late for me when I'm recording this. It's late at night. So Monday, the... 3rd of August has already closed and this is what happened on Monday and you can see that the strength of definitely the technology sector has continued a little bit less for communication services but definitely technology continued to um, to go higher and we see further improvements for real estate and that is about it nothing else is doing super is showing super strong moves so um, for the start of the week i think that technology and real estate are uh, definitely worth keeping an eye on let's leave it at this for the overview and move on to our monthly charts because as usual first sector spotlight of the month we will go over the monthly charts for asset classes and sectors. Uh, let me bring up the asset classes first and I'll, I'll put a, an RRG for asset classes right next to it just for reference because obviously this is a much longer picture than the weekly that we have here but then we can just you know put it a little bit more into perspective. Um, this is the S&P 500. Looking at that, that is, a, that is a strong chart. There is no doubt about it. And, um, and actually, it was a new all-time high on a closing basis for the S&P 500. You wouldn't say, if you look at the bar chart here, um, you can't see that. But if you look at the uh, line chart, then that, that, that's definitely the case. So if we look at this thing here, um, it, it went back into its trading channel. It's now challenging the upper boundary of this channel that we had in place since 2018. 
So I'm very curious to see how that plays out uh, for the rest of the month. Uh, remember that last little thingy here, that's only uh, one trading day, that's only today. So I'm gonna ignore that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move up to, um, to my zoomed in chart <clears throat> where you see this in a little bit more detail, but also switch this one to a line chart um, because you can then see that it is actually a new closing all time high for the S&P 500. Well, that is not the characteristic for a weak market. Uh, is it dangerous? Maybe. Um, there's a lot of arguments pro and there's, there's a lot of arguments contra. And um, I've actually written a, uh, an article in last weekend's Chart Watchers newsletter on the relationship between stocks and bonds. And I'll get back to that uh, when, we, when we start moving to the um, government bond chart, which is the next one on the list. And um, you can actually look at GOVD or IEF. GOVD is the aggregate, that's, that's all the whole treasury curve and IEF is seven to 10 years. Let me show you this one first because the title of my article was, will the next big move be in bonds? And, um, and the reason for that article is this chart here on the left, because what I see there is something that looks like a flag pattern. Now, um, it's a monthly chart and theoretically we shouldn't talk about flags on a monthly chart, or at least I don't think so. Um, I've actually, um, I've actually let, let me bring up the IAF, that's, that's, it's got a little bit more history and you, you see it's a nice straight move up and that flag-like pattern. And I actually, um, I picked up, I, I dug up my old, copy of Edwards and McGee, which is, there's, there's a few Bibles in technical analysis, um, uh, and, but this is definitely one of them, especially when it comes to, uh, to trend analysis and pattern recognition and chart formations and all that. And um, when I dug it out of the, um, out of my, out of my uh, closet, I, <clears throat> it's a very old book. And I actually uh, noticed that um, I have a fifth edition of Edwards and McGee, Technical Analysis of Stock Trends. It was printed in 1966. I was three years old at the time and I, I dug this up in a very obscure bookstore in London on uh, one of my first foreign trips. I'll never forget it uh, because in the Netherlands there, there was hardly any book to be to be bought on technical analysis it was very difficult so when i was in london and i found that bookstore that had books on technical analysis i was very thrilled with that um, so i picked it up which was which it's it's a real gem and um, um one of the things that that because i i wanted to look up what the what, what were exactly the rules for a flag pattern and I knew them sort I knew to sort them but I, I wanted to look it up and I, I need my glasses now because I'm getting too old for this um, but one of the things that I want to point out is all that is necessary to guard against failures to apply strictly the tests as to the authenticity of the pattern which we've already incorporated in the description which they did earlier on is one, the consolidation should occur after a straight line move. Well, it's a pretty straight line move. Activity should diminish appreciably and constantly during the pattern's construction and continue to decline until prices break away from it. That's a little bit difficult with all the volume stuff going on right now. I, I doubt that. Prices should break away in the expected direction in not more than four weeks. And that is, that is what I was looking for. A flag or a pennant should not take longer than four weeks to complete and to execute. A pattern of this type which extends beyond three weeks should be watched with suspicion. 
Now, I know that this is all about daily charts and the chart here is a monthly chart. So, according to the textbook, probably not a flag, but it looked damn good. So, I'm going to keep an eye on this one because usually this type of patterns are um, the preceding a, a pretty aggressive rally. Um, you know, look at, at what happened here in, um, in 2019, in the second half of 2019. So I'm going to watch this like a hawk. And that was the, why my, the title of my, uh, my article was, Will the Next Big Move Be in Bonds? Uh, and it also sort of coincides with the weekly rotation for um, bonds versus stocks. If that... If that big move is going to go, is going to go happening in bonds, then it will almost certainly drag the government bond tail right up, and and by definition, then it will drag stocks down. Not necessarily meaning that stocks will go down in performance, but they will be outperformed by government bonds, and um, that makes the the whole relationship so difficult to get. I, I talked about it last week and I talked about it previously on, on Sector Spotlight, um, especially because of the stocks are inside leading, so that is good, but they're already losing momentum. Government bonds are inside lagging, so that's weak, weak curd and stocks, but they're already picking up. And look at this pattern here. So I'm trying to combine what I see on the RRG, what I see on the monthly chart, and um, I'm not totally convinced that, that stocks will win the game in the next few months. Um, so take this as a sort of warning, caution. There's a thing I see in bonds that, that sort of suggests that bonds can go higher. Um, and, and higher bonds means lower yields, which should be good for stocks. So I, I guess the best way to explain it is that If stocks go up, it's because bonds are going down and not because of the strength of the stock market. That's, maybe that's the, I hope you understand. It's probably the best way I can explain it. Um, the um, other asset classes I'm going to leave for now. Um, uh, sorry, the, I need this one. Uh, investment grade corporate bonds still doing very well. That, that, feeds the idea that bonds will do well uh, and so we got high yield which is back into its range and, and potentially on the way to the upper range, upper end of that range there as well uh, that so that that whole fixed income bond like spectrum um, looks pretty good um, for the time being Let's move to sectors and I'm going to open up my sector chart. I'm going to bring you the sector ETFs on a weekly basis. I've got a little bit longer term perspective and you see that it is already updated to August 3. So that's today. So this is Friday, this is today, so the last observation here is only for today. We already seen SPY. Let's start with materials. And what we see in materials is um, it's a strong, it's a strong sector for sure, but it's getting into trouble around these highs dating back to 2018 and late 2020. Um, so let me sort it on symbol. Um, the rotation here is already rolling over and that's probably because the monthly chart, that longer term trend is seemingly getting into trouble. We definitely need to break above these highs 
to, uh, to get new fuel on a monthly basis to move higher in materials. If we go to communication services, that sector broke to new all-time highs at last month's close. Uh, and, I, and already did that earlier on. Um, like this a few months ago, but now it's already uh, also already above its all-time high on an intra-month basis. So that is a strong sign for the communication services sector. Uh, it's inside the weakening quadrant together with technology, the other very strong sector, uh, and rolling over, but there is a very good, uh, very good chance that that rotation will curl up inside weakening and move higher uh, before they're able to hit lagging. And breaking to new highs on your monthly chart will definitely going to help that rotation. The energy sector, that is a wild one. We got a big rally, but what you can see now, and I, I've been hammering that, that move up was was um, a recovery inside a falling trend and and I still believe that that is the case and that rotation here in energy confirms that it's now coming down hard um, over the last couple of days and also the last couple of weeks as you can see here and um, it looks as if this counter trend rally has now run into trouble around resistance offered by the lows that we saw in 2009, 2008, 2009, and that falling support line that now comes in as resistance. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to keep energy um, as an underperformer, as a weak sector. Let's look at financials. Um, similar, but the other way around, because it was, it was very strong and we are now running into trouble at the level of the old support line. This is a rising support line. In energy, it was a falling support line. Here's a rising support line. But in both cases, you can see that already for a couple of months, um, the financial sector is not able to push back into that channel, and that's weakness. And um, if we look at the weekly tail, you can see that is it's inside improving, but far to the left and starting to roll over. So. Um, remain very careful and cautious with the financials sector. Industrials was the sector that looked good uh, at the start of the week previously, but you see that it's now starting to roll over inside improving. Uh, and you can also see that on the monthly chart, um, it's, it's well below its all-time highs, and um, it'll probably have a lot of difficulty pushing higher and that's uh, that's causing that weakness that you already see emerging over the last couple of weeks on the tail. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if this still continues to roll over back down in towards the lagging quadrant in, uh, in coming weeks, especially with that daily tail already starting to move sharply down. Technology, yeah, what can I say? I mean, um, Stellar sector, stellar performance, new all-time high, pushing higher and higher and higher. Um, short tail, highest reading on the RS ratio uh, scale. Um, the strongest sector, without a doubt. Went through some weakness on the daily as well as the weekly. But as we've, saw, as we've seen on the daily RRG when I did the overview, it's already starting to curl upward in, inside the lagging quadrant there. If that continues, and it definitely looks, you know, with the start of this week already strong again, um, you know, uh, this is the, the, the I, I use the phrase, don't jump in front of freight trains. It's bad for your health. Well, technology is your freight train at the moment. So uh, please let it run. And if you're in it, stay with it. Staples. Pretty good chart, running into trouble at the top of the rising channel and the uh, the previous all time or the all time high level there, <clears throat> picking up some momentum on the relative chart, not quite there yet. And <clears throat> real estate, 
Oh, I need to, you, you, you will see that sometimes I use the unadjusted for the sectors where there is a big impact on dividends. I use the unadjusted to mark support and resistance and trends on, on monthly charts, um, as you can see here. Uh, broke above that horizontal level, doing pretty well. Inside lagging, picking up to today, so the first day of this week. Didn't start fantastic, but we still have a week to go. Um, so uh, we'll need to keep an eye on that, from, but from a uh, perspective of the monthly chart, this is not a bad chart at all. Go to utilities, and that is like staples. It's inside that rising channel. That's not a bad chart at all, but it's way below its all-time high. So this is steadily going higher, and with the S&P rallying and as driven by um, uh, technology and consumer discretionary, as we will see later. Uh, this is just a normal rallying sector, um, very defensive. That's why it's in, in the lagging quadrant, but the monthly chart itself is not bad at all. It's, it's, it's in the middle of the, of the channel, which is a good thing. Healthcare is the sector that actually broke to new highs. And I, well, I was very pleased to see that because if you can remember last week on Sector Spotlight, we looked at the seasonality for sectors and seasonality was, seasonality was pointing to the healthcare sector as the winner for the month of August. So we, we're starting off on a good footing for the healthcare sector. Um, seasonality is good, breaking to a new, new all-time high is good. The only thing that's, that's holding back is the tail inside the lagging quadrant that's a little bit shorter term let's see how if this break can fuel this tail back higher and then the final sector is consumer discretionary which is also breaking to new all-time highs which is inside the leading quadrant but losing a little bit of momentum and um, so, so again, this is a good chart, but I want to point out, and we've talked about it many, many times, the difference with the equal weight. This is the consumer discretionary equal weight. So excluding um, Amazon, and you can see how much difference that it makes. Uh, and it will also, if I add RCD to this, RRG, then you will find RCD here, rolling over, insight improving, while XLY is rolling over, insight leading. Um, very strong stock, Amazon.com. Um, the sector having trouble on the monthly chart, having trouble on the RRG. So we need to monitor that closely. Um, but Amazon is still doing very well, and that is dragging the uh, consumer discretionary sector higher, uh, and that makes it a strong stock in terms of the cap-weighted sectors. And that was the overview of the monthly charts that completed in July. We've got another month ahead of us, so um, in four weeks' time we will review what has happened and we will see how all these moves have panned out. Ladies and gentlemen, that was it. This wraps up Sector Spotlight for today. Thank you for watching and if you liked the video, please do your thumb magic and the likes, etc. Questions go into the comments and you will also find my answers there when they are required and useful, of course. Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern with replays on the Stock Chart YouTube channel. For now, please stay safe and I hope to see you again next week. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.